All right, welcome to 1.6. We're now going to do combining like terms with word problems. So we did these. This was a two-step equation. We're writing and solving. So it's h for hours. The rate is 300 miles per hour. It's traveled 1,250 miles already, and we're going a total of 4,550 miles. All right, we're going to solve this equation. Subtract 1,250 from both sides. 300h equals what? 3,300. 3, Divide both sides by 300. We could cross out these zeros and these zeros, and it's going to take 11 hours. This is a word problem. Put a word on your answer. All right, and then from the last lesson, combining like terms, n plus n plus n. We're going to be using n instead of x today. So that's three n's plus 2 plus 4 is 6, right? We've combined our like terms, so it's a two-step equation. Then it's a piece of cake, 3n. We're borrowing, that's 8. So that's 78, divide both sides by 3, and 3 goes into 78, what, twice for 7, and 6 for 18, and so n, that's an n, not an h, n equals 18. All right, so in the problems we just had, we had cars uh, driving in one car driving, but what if we have two cars and uh, going in opposite directions? And let's see that. So in these, you're going to have two rates. And so you're going to have two coefficients. So let's see that uh, in this first problem. Two cars start in the same place and travel in opposite directions, just like the picture you saw on the last screen. One drives 50 miles per hour and the other drives 60 miles per hour, right? So every hour they're getting farther and farther apart, right? After one hour, they're 110 miles apart. And then two hours, right? They're farther apart. And three hours, they're even farther apart, right? Because they're going 50 and 60 miles every hour. Now, you could do the figure out this problem without an equation, but we want to show you on simple ones uh, how this all works. So if you have two rates, we have 50 miles per hour. That's our coefficient. We're trying to find hours. I could have used H for hours. It's just that it's tradition to use T for this, so I'm going to use T for time. And 60 miles per hour will be the other coefficient. And the total distance, this is D for distance. All right, and this is R for rates, all right, and T for time, is 440, right? And you get a very simple equation. You combine your like terms, you get 110T equals 440, and divide both sides by 110, and cross out the zeros, and the time is four hours. It'll take them four hours to be 440 miles apart. So this works with trains, planes, cars, as long as they're going in the opposite direction. We'll talk about when they go in the same direction in a second. One plane flies north at 200 miles per hour. The other flies south at 300 miles per hour. So those are our two rates. So 200T plus 300T. And we want to know when they're 3,000 miles apart. So we combine our like terms for 500t, divide both sides by 500, cross out some zeros, and t equals 6 hours. It's that straightforward. There are more complicated versions of this coming. All right. Two trains that are 560 miles apart are traveling toward each other. Now, here I want you to write these notes. Still in opposite directions, all right, right? They're not going away from each other anymore, but they are still in opposite directions, right? They're going toward each other in opposite directions. And so what happens is you end up doing this exactly the same way, okay? So let's see that. One train is going 80 miles per hour. The other is 60 miles per hour. And we want to know exactly when these two are going to crash, right? 
Okay, so there's our equation. 80 plus 60 is 140. 140t equals 560. Divide both sides by 140. And I think 14 goes very nicely into 56 four times. All right. Right. And you can make this slightly harder by having them not come out nice as nice whole hours, like four and a third hours. But the key is you're always going to have a plus sign there when the trains are traveling in opposite directions. One's going this way, one's going that way. Toward each other or away from each other doesn't matter. Okay. That's a key thing that messes some students up. Okay, now they're going to go in the same direction. You do everything the same, except you're going to be subtracting. So what's going on here is you're going to have, they're, go, they're racing. This is how you do the problem if they're racing. And so this one's going 50 miles an hour, and this is going 60 miles an hour. And right, you can see after one hour, the first one is 10 miles ahead, right? And hopefully after two hours, it's 20 miles ahead. And we want to know when the faster one is going to get 75 miles per head, ahead. So it's exactly the same math, right? Rates are your coefficients. We have a rate of 50 miles per hour. But now, oh, now I already made a mistake. Now, the key with this and make sure you put the faster rate first or you're going to get a negative time. And that's not going to make any sense. So you got to put the faster rate first. So we got to put the 60T first because they're winning, right? And the 50T second and then we want to know when they're going to be 75 miles per, apart well 60t minus 50t is 10t equals 75 divided by 10 and hopefully we know that 75 divided by 10 is 7.5 please if you're multiplying by 10 you move the decimal point and make 750 if you divide by 10 you move the decimal point the other way and you make 7.5 if you don't know that's a very nice shortcut if not, you're going to sit there and do this work. I would prefer that you know this shortcut, but it's 7.5 hours, or also known as 7 hours and 30 minutes. So that is really the only tricky thing today. You have to read the problem and see if they're going in the same direction or opposite directions. Okay, that's half of your homework. The second half is a, a classic problem called consecutive integer problems. Consecutive integers are like counting. One, two, three, four are numbers right in a row. Consecutive. Seven, eight, nine are consecutive numbers. And it turns out you can you could figure out problems like you see on the screen here by sort of guessing the number or doing various division by three, but we're going to do it with a combined like term equation. So we want to find three numbers in a row that add up to 48. So let's do that. So we're going to make the first number n. Now the second number has to be one bigger than the first number. We're going to say the first number is the lowest number. You could do this with subtraction, but the second number is one bigger, right? And the third number is two bigger than the first one, right? If you have seven, eight, nine, right? This one would be seven, eight would be one bigger and nine would be two bigger than seven. That's how it works, okay? And so it says find three consecutive inter integers that add up sum, so we're gonna sum them, to 48. And so there is only one combination that will do that and we can find that now. So n plus n plus n is three n's, one plus two is three, and we've done combining like terms and we have got a two-step equation. We subtract three from both sides, 3n equals 45, divide by three, and the first number is 15. Now, you're not done, right? Normally, you're done when you get there, right? We have, it says find three consecutive integers. So what are, the, are they? They're 15, 16, and 17. And you add those up, and they will add up to 48, All right? So let's try another one. All right, so now it says four consecutive integers, right? So we have n n plus 1, n plus 2, and the next one is going to be n plus 3, right? That makes sense. So we're adding them up, and they have to sum up to 82. That's our equation. So n plus n plus n plus n now is 4n. 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3 is 6, and so our two-step is 4n plus 6 equals 82. Subtract 6 from both sides, and 
we get 4n equals 76 divide by 4 and n equals what 4 goes into oops not n 4 goes into 76 once 36 19 so n is 19 so what are the four numbers they are 19 20 21 and 22 if you add those up they will add up to 82 all right, so this can be done with negative numbers, right? Three consecutive integers. So let's try that. n, n plus 1, no, and n plus 2. And we'll see this in a second. So there's three of them. It says that, and they have to be in a row, and they have that up to negative 42. So let's see that. n plus n plus n is 3n. 1 plus 2 is 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. 3n equals negative 45, right? Same as adding negative 3 there. Divide by 3. Now, n equals negative 15. All right, so now everyone write down the three consecutive integers. Well, the first one's negative 15. The next one's 1 plus that, negative 14, right? And the next one is 2 plus the first one, negative 13, right? That's the way negative numbers work. So we're always finding the lowest number using this technique, and then we're adding to that. Could you do it the other way? Yes, but subtraction could uh, cause uh, difficulties as far as uh, combining like terms. Okay, now we're going to get tricky again. All right, so now we're going to get consecutive even or odd integers. Right, so like 6, 8, 10 are consecutive even integers, right? We're skipping the odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7 are consecutive odd numbers, okay? And so it turns out you do both of them the exact same way, right? Interestingly, right, the first number will always be n. The second number, even or odd, doesn't really matter because the second number is going to be 2 more than the first number. And the third number is going to be 4 more than the first number and so on. So let's see this. Find three consecutive odd integers that sum to 27. It really doesn't matter that they're even or odd, but it does matter that we're skipping a number, right? So the three things that we're going to be adding together are n, n plus 2, and n plus 4. So those are the th three that add together. And not every number has three consecutive odd integers. You, if you just try to, if I were put a random number over here, it may not come out nicely. Right? I actually have to think of the three numbers and then check the work and create the problem. So let's see this. Uh, n plus n plus n is 3n. 2 plus 4 is 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. 3n equals 21. Divide by 3 n equals 7. Now, what are the three numbers? The three numbers are 7, 9, right? Not 8. We're odd integers, and 11. Those are the three numbers that add up to 27. Okay? Try it with even integers. You do it exactly the same way. So, n. So, we're skipping numbers because we're doing even integers. And n plus 4. And they add up to negative 24. All right, this is as tricky as they get. Finish if you haven't. n plus n plus n is 3n. 2 plus 4 is 6 equals negative 24. Subtract 6 from both sides. 3n equals negative 30. Divide by 3, n equals negative 10. All right, so negative 10 is an even integer. All right, what are the next two? Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8 right? Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Those are the three consecutive even integers that sum up to negative 24. All right, so we did two classic problems. The first ones are called motion problems, the motion of cars, trains, and planes. The second ones are called consecutive number problems. They are both classics. Your parents learned them when they were in algebra class many years ago. And see if you can do this one. So we have one going west at 200, and one flies east at 300. All that you're reading that really just so you know they're going in opposite directions, right? If it's the same direction, you got to subtract. But they're going in opposite directions, so we're adding, and those are the rates, so those are our coefficients, and so this is our equation. 
500t equals 3,100. And I made this one not come out so nicely so people would see that. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, 3,100 doesn't come in as nicely. There we go. And so t equals 31 fifths, right? But we're not going to say time is 31 fifths. So it's six hours and one fifth, six and one fifth hours, right? right so what is six and one fifth hours, right? Or it is 6.2, all right? Let's, we'll write that. You can write that, 6.2 hours. How much, how many minutes is 0.2 hours? What's two tenths of 60? Well, it's actually 12 minutes, all right? So please be careful of that. Tests, well, if you ever get uh, high school tests that are trying to be tricky, they'll do things like this, right? And they'll do this kind of problem, and so many people will think it's 6 hours and 20 minutes. No way. Hours are in, out of 60, not out of 10 or 100. So this is 6 hours and 12 minutes. You're more than welcome to write 6.2 or 6 and 1 fifth hours. Just realize that minutes are out of 60. So there's a consecutive integer problem. So there's four of them. Oh, consecutive integers, I'm doing it wrong. Even Mr. Ben goes fat too fast sometimes. Right? When I make a mistake in class, there's always that student who's raising their hand and you know, or eager to tell me that I've made a mistake. 4 into 9 goes twice. 4 into 16 goes 4. All right, so the first number is 24. Remember, you're not done when you do that in the homework. So that's 24, and then we're going right in a row. 24, 25, 26, and 27. If you add those up, they add up to 102. All right, so uh, we're skipping numbers, so we're doing n plus n plus 2 plus n plus 4, and there's three of them, and they have to add up to negative 87. n plus n plus n is 3n plus 6 equals negative 87. Subtract 6 from both sides. 3n equals, now remember this is 7 plus 6, 13. Is that right? Yeah, negative 93. Divide both sides by 3. And n there is looking like negative 31. Okay, so now let's, this is where on the test I'm going to get some people. All right, so the first number is negative 31. Make sure you know what the next two are. All right, the next two are negative 29, right, and negative 27. All right, three consecutive odd integers. You're skipping numbers. That's why we had n plus 2 and n plus 4. I will get people on the test that tell me the answer is negative 31, negative 30, negative 29. The, the, those won't add up and they're not all odd. All right, so this is the same direction. I'm nice. I underline when it's the same. 99% of the time, it's opposite directions in these classic problems, but I wanted to show you both. So it's, right, it's the first rate times the time plus the second rate times the time equals the distance. That's the equation. We're going to use that equation for many other things this year. So please understand it. Right, number one thing is rates always go as in front of con. Oh, fastest one has to go first because they're going in the same direction, right? And this is not going to be a plus sign anymore because it's one of the minus. It's they're going in the same direction, and so that's the total distance is 120. 10t equals 120. Divide by 10, and it's going to take 12 hours. All right. Please, all right, these are same direction. If you're going opposite directions, they could crash into each other or be uh, going in that way. So those are both plus there. Same direction is minus. Good luck with the homework.